In this video, we're going to be looking at composite functions. And what I mean by composite function is where we chain two functions together. So this is a number machine here, and x has been fed through this function here, which is just timesing it by 2. So if x is times by 2, it would output 2x. And then it's fed through another function. So you've got 2x, we're adding 1 to it, and it would be 2x plus 1. But we could represent these two functions as a single composite function where x just goes into times 2 plus 1 and then it outputs that immediately. So this would be the same as these two functions combined. So more generally, if x is fed through a function f, then it would be f of x would be outputted. And then if f of x was fed into g, then it would be g of f of x. So let's just write that again separately. If I had x... If I apply f to it, I would have f of x. And if I then apply g to this here, we then do g of f of x, and that would be the combined function. But we can write that just as g f of x, and that would mean exactly the same thing as that. Now, this probably sounds a bit abstract, but let's just do um, a quick example. Let's just say we had f of x was equal to, say, 3x minus 1. And we said that g of x was equal to 4x. Then, what would I mean if I said f of g of 5? Well, what that means is, if we put those brackets in just like we did before, it's f of g of 5. Now, we can just work out first what g of 5 is. What's g of 5? Well, it's g of 5 is equal to 4 times 5. Remember, we substitute the x with 5 if it's g of 5. So g of 5 is 4 times 5, which is 20. And now we can do f of 20. So f of 20 is 3 times 20 minus 1. That's going to be 59. And what if more generally I wanted f of g of x? Well, I do the same thing as before. It's f of g of x. And then g of x we know is just 4x. So I can do f of 4x. And then f of x is 3 times x minus 1. So if x we replace by 4x, we just do 3 times 4x minus 1. Remember that we substitute each occurrence of x with whatever's in this bracket here. So it's 3 times 4x minus 1. So it's 3 times 4x minus 1. And that's just going to simplify to 12x minus 1. Let's do some more examples. We've got here f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. And we've got g of x is equal to x squared. So we firstly want to find f of g of 3. So as always, we start by putting brackets around the g of 3. So it's f of g of 3. Now that's f of what is g of 3? g of 3 is 3 squared. So it's f of 9 g of 3 is 9, and then f of 9 is 2 times 9 plus 1. So 2 times 9 plus 1, that's 18 plus 1, which would be 19. Let's do g of f of 3. Now, will this give us the same value or something different? Let's see. We've just switched around the order of the two functions. So we're going to do g of f of 3. So that's g of, what's f of 3? Well, f of 3 is 2 times 3 plus 1, that's 7. And then we do g of 7, which is 7 squared, which is 49. And can you see that f of g of 3 was 19, but g of f of 3 was 49? They're different values, so the order of the functions does matter. Let's do the others. we got c, we now got f of g of x. And if we put the brackets, that's always our first step, to put the brackets around this thing here. f of g of x. Now g of x we know is x squared, so we can do f of x squared. And then we're doing f of x squared, so that's 2 times x squared plus 1. We substitute each occurrence of the x with whatever's in here. So it's 2 times x squared plus 1, so we get 2x squared plus 1. Now let's do the next one. We've got g of f of x, so we swap the order of the two functions. Now we do g of f of x, so we bracket appropriately. So 
The f of x we can replace with 2x plus 1. And then we do g of 2x plus 1. So we're doing 2x plus 1 squared. And I'm just going to leave it like that, but you could expand it out. And then finally, I've got here f of f of x. So I'm actually applying the function f twice. So I do the same as before, f of f of x. Now the f of x here I can replace with 2x plus 1. And then I'm doing f of 2x plus 1. So that's equal to 2 times 2x plus 1 plus 1. So it's 2 times 2x plus 1 plus 1. And if we expand and simplify, that's going to be 4x. 2 times 1 is 2, plus the 1 is 3. Now we've got a second question here. We've got f of x is equal to 1 over x minus 1. And g of x is equal to 2x plus 1. So we first want to find f of g of 5. So we do put the brackets in, f of g of 5. Now g of 5 is 2 times 5 plus 1, which is 11, so it's f of 11. And then we're going to do f of 11, which is 1 over 11 minus 1. So 1 over 11 minus 1, which is 1 over 10. Let's do the second one. The second question is f of g of x. Now if we put the brackets in, it's f of g of x. Now that's going to be equal to f of, what's g of x? It's just 2x plus 1. And then we're doing f of 2x plus 1. So it's f of 2x plus 1, which is 1 over, and we replace each instance of x with 2x plus 1. So it's 1 over 2x plus 1 minus 1. And that just simplifies to 1 over 2x. Let's do the next one. C, we got g of f of x. So if we put the brackets in, it's g of f of x. That's equal to g of, now f of x we can replace with 1 over x minus 1. And then to the 1 over x minus 1, we're applying g to it. So g of 1 over x minus 1 is going to be 2 times, and we replace the x with 1 over x minus 1. So it's 2 times 1 over x minus 1, and then we're going to add 1. And when we times this 2 by this fraction, you can think of that 2 as 2 over 1. So it's 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times x minus 1 is x minus 1. And we're adding the 1. And we could combine that into a single fraction, but I'm not going to do that here. Now question 3. We've got f of x is equal to x squared plus 8. And g of x is equal to 2x minus 1. And I want to solve f of g of x is equal to g of f of x. Now let's just work out each of these. So let's put the brackets around this. So we got f of g of x, well g of x is 2x minus 1, equals g of f of x is x squared plus 8. And then let's work out this now. So f of 2x minus 1. So in f of 2x minus 1, we replace each instance of x with 2x minus 1. So it's 2x minus 1 squared plus 8 equals g of x squared plus 8. So here we've got doing g of x squared plus 8. So we replace each instance with x squared plus 8. So it's 2 times x squared plus 8 minus 1. Let's just expand. So I'm going to just quickly expand this. You'd usually write the bracket out twice, but I'm going to do it in my head for the sake of time. Equals, expand out this bracket, we got 2x squared plus 16 minus 1. Now if I continue up here, we've got um, so we've got 4x squared, and if we subtract the 2x squared, we're just going to have 2x squared. And then we've got the minus 4x here, there's no x's over here, minus 4x. And then let's just simplify a bit first, we've got plus 9 there. And over here we've got 16 minus 1, which is 15. And then let's just subtract the 15, so we've got 2x squared 
minus 4x. 9 minus the 15 is minus 6. Then you might notice that everything is divisible by 2, so we're going to halve everything. Half of 0 is still just 0. Now we can factorise this. We need two numbers which add to give minus 2 and times to give minus 3. Those numbers are minus 3 and 1, so it's x minus 3 and x plus 1. So that means that x is 3 or x is minus 1. Now I've got these two test your understanding questions here. You've got f of x is 3x, g of x is 2x plus 1, and we've want, I want you to find f of g of 5, I want you to find f of g of x, and I want you to find g of f of x. And then secondly, I've got f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 1, and g of x is equal to 3x plus 1 over 2, and I want you to find just f of g of x as a single fraction. You may want to pause the video now to have a go at those. Right, let's have a go at these. We've got f of g of 5, so let's put the brackets around here. Now f of what's g of 5? Well, g of 5 is 2 times 5 plus 1, that's 11. And then we're doing f of 11, so f of 11 is 3 times 11, which is 33. Now this one here, let's put the brackets around it. So it's f of g of x. g of x is 2x plus 1. And then we're doing f of 2x plus 1. So f of 2x plus 1. We replace each instance of x with 2x plus 1. So it's 3 times 2x plus 1. And that is equal to 6x plus 3. And then we've got this one here, g of f of x. Let's put the brackets around that. So it's g of f of x, which is 3x, and then we're doing g of 3x, g of 3x is 2 times 3x plus 1, so it's 2 times 3x plus 1, which is 6x plus 1. So you can see they're similar, but they're slightly different. Now this one here, let's put the brackets around here, we're doing f of g of x, which is 3x plus 1 over 2, and then we're doing f of this. So f of x is 1 over x plus 1, so f of 3x plus 1 over 2 is 1 over, and you replace that x with 3x plus 1 over 2. So it's 1 over 3x plus 1 over 2, and then we've got plus 1 there. Now we need to combine this into a single fraction, so let's put this 1 as 1 over 1, and then that allows us to combine that into a single fraction. So, in fact, let's write it as 2 over 2, because then we've got a common denominator, so we can now add these bottom fractions. So we've got 3x plus 1 plus 2 is 3x plus 3. So we've got a kind of fraction within a fraction here. Now, how do we simplify this? Well, if we multiply the top and bottom of the outer fraction by 2, so we're going to times top by 2, bottom by 2, then the top will just be 2. Now, if we multiply this by 2, it just, it just gets rid of the over 2. So it just becomes 3x plus 3. So in general, whenever you have a fraction within a fraction, always multiply the top and bottom of the outer fraction by the denominator of the inner fraction.